Hello family. Welcome to the channel. My name is Shelly. I want to refer you to this playlist, Restored Sight, The Upper Room, The Curse, Baptism by Fire, The Bridegroom, and The Lord's Words. These are teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. You can start at the Truth Introduction video. I'm going to cover a lot of it in this one. This is our sister in Christ, Casey. Just back in October, I did not know Casey. The Lord Jesus sent her to me. He had a plan. His plan was to use us together because she is a hearer and a scribe and I'm a seer and a voice and together we stand for the Lord Jesus Christ as his witnesses for his glory for his heavenly courts for a merciful last call to be the bride of Christ he's been teaching his own scriptures using us as his instruments his tools his servants we are nothing we're nobody but the Lord chose us to do this I just want to start by saying this this is the last call and I'm going to tell you in a summary summary of all that the Lord has said in these teachings and what it means to be his bride and what I ask is that each and every one of you because I'm speaking to new people each and every one of you take it to the Lord Jesus Christ you go to him you ask him for your confirmation and he will give it to you he's answering people almost immediately time is up there's no more time that's why he's doing this it's merciful man has messed up his doctrines to no end it messed up his scriptures and created false doctrines so many are deceived and the Lord in his mercy is telling us the truth and all he asks is that people believe him he said come to me admit your wayward condition seek my face with a humble and a meek heart ask me to restore you and he will take the key of David he will turn you right, upright, breaking the curse, completing the sanctification, and Father makes the ultimate decision and puts you on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore you are his bride in the Philadelphia church, completely sanctified. Now I'm going to explain what that means. To understand who the bride is, you have to understand who the bride is not. Each and every one of us are born in a condition of a curse. 
And what that means, literally, but spiritually, because we are spirit beings. We are not our flesh. Our spirit man is cursed with the left eye everything to the left is evil everything to the right is good it's a twin system of good and evil it's in everything and it's everywhere and it's in each and every one of us until the curse is broken the left eye is tethered to the pit of hell. The right eye is tethered to heaven. This is what is called a house divided and double-minded. Luke 11, 34. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, the whole thy whole body is the I'm sorry, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also is full of darkness. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. The single eye is when the Lord Jesus takes the key of David and turns you right. Turns that left. I turned that off, sorry. Turns the left eye right making both eyes single full of his light just like the scripture reads the moat and the beam has to be removed from the eye that is the curse when the Lord turns you you're completely light baptized by fire you can see spiritually that is what I do I see the Lord uses me for my eyes God is light the Lord Jesus Christ is light there is no darkness in them the Lord Jesus Christ cannot be unequally yoked he cannot make a covenant with any part of darkness it is the sanctification completion that makes us full of light and makes us part of the bride of Christ the Lord has shown that it's the Philadelphia church and that is who he's coming to get in the rapture All those who overcome will make it in the church. That's what he's doing. He's calling in the bride out of, out of the body of Christ. The body of Christ and the bride of Christ is not the same. The curse was brought on by pride. So you can't have pride in your heart. That's why he says, come to me with a meek and a humble heart. You can't break a curse of, of sorry, I got a sneezing kitty. <laughs> you can't break a curse of pride with pride still in the heart. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Double-minded, the house divided, those still walking around blind. And yes, believers, believing the gospel does not break the curse. It is completing the sanctification process. 
You believe the gospel, it has to fall on good ground, the seed has to grow, it has to produce spiritual fruit. And then, you're weighed out with whatever measure you meet. If the Lord deems you worthy by your measure of your spiritual fruit, then He will break the curse. He will circumcise the left eye. And Father will put you on the rock after He weighs you out. And makes the final call. The Lord's proved it out in all of the scriptures throughout all of the videos. Himself. Literally. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. In Matthew 3.11, it is clear that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not the same as the baptism with fire. The baptism of fire, the flame of God, God's light, you have to be baptized with the fire. To receive all of his light. No more darkness. In James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith. God resisteth the proud. But giveth grace unto the humble. It's all about the heart condition. And the spiritual fruit. Psalm 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A right spirit turning to the right, full of God's light, cutting out the left curse, the twin, evil and good, each inside everyone until the curse is broken. This is just some examples of the twin system of good and evil, the mockery of it from those who are in the enemy's camp. They know about the curse. Their God, Lucifer, they hear from him through the right eye the same as we would through the right but when you're a double-minded house divided, you're getting both, and that's why you can't see. You can't discern. But they know, and they sever the eye, the right eye, from heaven, making both eyes down. And God makes his bride, the Lord Jesus, his bride, both eyes up, right, and they make both eyes down. When they fully sell out to Satan. The silent twin. Twins in paradise. There's a divine ex-feminine spirit. He, she, them. Lucifer, Satan. That feeds off of the soul. Until the curse is broken. In Joel 2.25, the Lord says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. When the curse is broken, the Lord restores all that that canker worm, that evil divine ex-female, energy spirit eats while one is still tethered to the pit of hell 
Here's more examples. You can see the serpents making the appearance of two eyes. Bright of the twin. False twins. The evil twin. Evil twin. Twins of evil. Even in the stars, the evil twin and the good twin. Left, you can see in Gemini, he is standing upright with a star pointing at his left eye. And the twin on the right, there's a star pointing to the right eye, and he is kneeling. It's written in the heavens. All the twin system of good and evil is in everything. Everything. The Lord's been trying to get the attention of the body of Christ that he is calling into the bride group through dreams, visions, scriptures, words, songs, a myriad of ways, but many are not hearing. They can't hear because they're still a double-minded and a house divided. So the Lord is using us as messengers to call them in to call you in he also sends brothers and sisters out to give messages but many are still refusing the call another example of the twin system they like to use water for reflection to show the twin of evil and good. Examples of the eye. Eye without a face. Open your eyes. Uh, another one. Eyes without a face. Eyes wide shut. Eye, eye, eye. Evil eyes, the evil eye, the evil eye. It's, it's mockery, but it's also truth. Evil eyes, the evil eye, the evil eye. Evil eyes, evil eye. All different dates, different years. It's been going on since time began because it is the curse. Evil Eye Galaxy. You have to turn everything upside down to see the truth. There's actually a third witness. To everything the Lord's been trying to do to call in the bride. And that is Jonathan Cleck. He's been teaching on spiritual sight for many, many years. And people were not hearing him. They are mocking him. They are scoffing him. They are not listening to him. He's a test for the bride. He's the door. So are we on this channel. The Lord is putting up a door for the bride to walk through. She has to step through on faith. Seek His face. Pray. Ask to be restored. She has to believe Him. Believe the Lord. It's a test. It's merciful. And it's the last chance. The last call. You have to purge all abominable sin. The Lord's been given many warnings about idolatry. He's proved out that the Nicolaitan doctrine has been rebranded as once saved, always saved. You are sealed. After you're fully sanctified. Not by just believing the gospel. Satan took the Nicolaitan doctrine. 
that the Lord God hates rebranded it and deceived many, many people. More examples about the eye. It's been in the scriptures the entire time. It's just been overlooked by other double-minded people who are teaching God's word. Who have not been set free. Who are still under the curse themselves. Therefore have no business teaching God's word. Acts 26, 18. Paul was given the mystery of restored spiritual sight and he was sent to open their eyes to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the powers of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified sanctified by faith that is in me Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free and restore sight to the blind. All the blind, everyone is blind until they are restored. One example of how the Lord is trying to reach people is bees bees and honey 1 samuel fourteen twenty nine. then jonathan then said jonathan my father hath troubled the land see i pray you how mine eyes have been enlightened because i tasted a little of this honey there's countless ways the lord's trying to reach people but this is one example. Many are having visions or dreams of bees. Or the Lord's been putting bees and honey in front of them in their feeds while they're online or out in public, however it may be. He's trying to reach them. He's trying to reach you. The Lord has been using many channels on YouTube to try to get his point across and to confirm what he's doing here on this channel as well. Wake up, old sleeper. Many have no clue. Most, 99%, don't even have a clue what it means to be asleep. It means double-minded, a house divided, is still under the curse. Where is the fire, church? The flame of God, the baptism by fire. 321 is the confirmation number one of them that I've seen on this particular video to confirm Vicki herself. Narrow Road. If you aren't for me or against me, many are deceived. A house divided cannot stand. Why won't you come to me? Look again is what it's called. At the time she gave this, there was words going on on this channel that her word confirmed it in many different ways. The same with Vicki. And this word of Vicki's, the Lord confirms Casey and I as two witnesses. And the wheel within a wheel and time within time for Ezekiel's wheel and all that he's been showing us on this channel about it and how time is running out. Rachel is the church. The last will be first. The first will be last. Leah is Israel. Rachel is the church. Only the bride is going only the Philadelphia church is going in the rapture take heed I said that I'm a seer the Lord speaks to me through numbers emails 
the clouds rainbows he's put eight rainbows in my sky in less than a year right out the very same window to confirm all that he's doing he put two in the sky just in january to confirm casey and i one for her and one for me eight the number for infinity and eternity because he's coming to take his bride to her eternity the rainbow and the 222 for the flame of God is how everything started with me. I just, myself, I didn't even understand what his plan was until I did. I knew I could see. I didn't know how to define it. I couldn't teach anything that's being taught here. Casey could not either. It is all the Lord. But I can see, and this is how he speaks to me. See with your eyes. You need your spiritual sight. In home, meaning your spiritual temple, that peace, your space has been missing. Right? The curse being broken, the right eye being turned to the right, the peace you've been missing. It's just a prayer away. Hint, hint. The 204 is cornerstone. The Lord is our cornerstone. It's his signature. He gave me this message to share. A call. He's calling the bride. It's time to uprise. Move up to the upper room for the baptism by fire to break the curse. Big information. Hey. Hey rewards reward to be the bride spirit move we have leftovers what's leftovers mean i'll tell you that in a second the number four for the door that everyone needs to go through the door just for you and others available to scramble meaning get to it the definitions Turn to the right. Make both eyes right. Radiance and glory. The fire. The light. Cutting out the darkness. Majestic Lord. Unleavened. You can't be leavened. Okay? Completely unleavened. Cutting out the darkness. Manner of speaking. Fiery. Baptism by fire. To receive. Come now. What leftovers means is about the bidden, where we are in God's timeline, the Lord's timeline, before he comes to collect his bride. A certain man made a great supper and bade many to come, right? He bade many. The Lord has given a word about the bidden. He started the call at the beginning in December. Then he gave the word for the bidden. I believe that was number two. And then yesterday, the third one. There is one, two, three calls in this parable. And one, two, three, three, two, one is my big confirmation number for the countdown. Two, two, two was the first number he gave me for the flame of God. Three, two, one was the second one. And there's one, two, three calls in this. And in the word, he was showing us where we are. Everyone may has been making excuses not to come. Not believe in him. So he keeps sending out the servant. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Because everyone was rejecting, he sent out the servant a second time to ask others to come in. They rejected now it's the third time he's sending out the servant again to bid them to come in and give those seats to someone else because those that refused left those seats open so he's giving them to the others. He just said this in his word yesterday. He's been showing us how all the scriptures are playing out, what it means to be his bride. 
and how the bride is called. She's chosen. She humbles herself. She goes through the door. She walks worthy. She's not wallowing in sin. She puts God first. If there's any sin in your life that needs to be repented of, do it now. Idolatry, fornication, everything abominable that God hates, pride is the, the destroyer. Pride. You have to have a meek and a humble heart. Father hates pride. The Lord Jesus hates pride. The Lord cannot be unequally yoked. He cannot make covenant with a bride who has part dark, still under the curse, not sanctified. He says, come to me. Admit your wayward condition of the curse. With a meek and humble heart, and I will take the key of David, turn you right, make you upright, break in the curse. Father will put you on the rock, and that is sanctification, complete, done, finished, eternal. The bride, the Philadelphia church. All of Luke is written to the bride. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. You can't put a cursed spirit into a glorified body. You understand? The curse must be broken. The sanctification completed, put upon the rock to be the bride. Another way the Lord speaks to me is He'll drop things in front of me while I'm online. I'd never seen this movie before. Many of you probably have. The Pilgrim's Progress. So I clicked on it to see what the Lord wanted me to see. And I haven't finished it. But one thing I found for what little I did watch was this journey you're embarking on not for the double-minded. A house divided cannot stand. Purify, purify ye hearts, ye double-minded. In another word, I think it was called the knowledge. It's hard to keep up with them. There's a lot. Pushing 50 now, I think. The Lord was teaching us the little owl and the great owl. And he calls the bride his great owls and the body the little owls. And he was doing this deliberately as a test. Because the Pharisees accused the Lord of being Beelzebub. Casting out devils with devils, right? We're always being tested. The Lord knows the enemy has corrupted everything. He's got a twisted, corrupted version of everything God has because he can't create. So we know he has a, there's a paradox of good and evil. There's a good owl and a bad owl. The point is he's always testing us. But he's showing us the body and the bride are not the same. And the great owl is going to turn into the swan when she's glorified. The Lord speaks to us through everything. Today at work, our sister Casey, something happened to her desk, so they gave her a better desk to work at. So she gets to the desk. And it's got the 4321 countdown on it. It's got an arrow for up and down, left and right, twin system of good and evil. 
So I had to show you that. She sent me the email saying, look what the Lord did, you know. He is in everything. He speaks to us through everything. He's a million steps ahead of us. And when you have your spiritual sight, you learn that your communication is completely open with your God. There's no more stumbling blocks or hindrances. You don't question whether or not it's from God. You already know. Because the enemy, the curse has already been cut out. You're on the rock when you're the bride. Man has lied because they have been deceived themselves from generations of false doctrines. The Lord in His mercy is warning. This is the last chance. He's teaching His own scriptures to show His truth. Sorry, I, I'm having a problem with my phone. I'm not going to start over. <laughs> so Jacob and Esau, left and right, even the geography bears witness to the truth. This is from Jonathan, a teaching he did a year ago. The land bears witness to the truth of the twin system of good and evil, left and right, up and down. The Lord Jesus is coming for his bride. Darkness cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. There will be a great multitude that comes in during the judgments. Don't take the chance of being one of them. Time is up. All those who refuse will not taste of his supper. He's made it clear in his word. He's made it clear in his teachings. If you turn a deaf ear, you will hurt yourself. Seek him for confirmation. And pray and ask to be restored with a meek and a humble heart. Get into the teachings and learn any truth that I have left out because I can only remember so much. <laughs> it's proven in the scriptures. The bride is the only one that's going. At least right now. In this rapture. I don't know if there is another one. I don't really see that. I see that they come in as they die for Christ during the judgments. But the Lord hasn't been specific about that. My point is, don't take the chance. Seek His face now with the humble and meek heart. Admit your wayward condition and ask him to turn you right upright, breaking the curse, and ask Father to put you on the rock, completely sanctified, baptized by fire, fully restored with your spiritual sight. It is vital. It is truth. And he has spoken it. The call of the bride. The last chance. Well, that's all I have. Thanks for coming. I'll be praying you make it through the door. God bless you.